Speaking of journey, I want to get into the prison radio project. Mm. But let's go for a walk first. Yeah, yeah? man. Let's walk. Cool. Dre, I think it's important for us to kind of like really break down how the system works, especially in regards to the Proceeds of Crime Act. Mm. Now, you know, you spoke about the fact that you have to prove what you've made in terms of money, but not only the proving of what you've made, um, if I'm not wrong, I believe that you can also accrue debt that you have to pay back if you, don't, if you can't afford to actually pay back what they believe has been illegally gained. Is that true? Yeah, that's correct. So what can happen um, so most people get their proceeds of crime act while they're in prison. Yeah. Um, if you are un unable to pay it back, then you can you can actually get an additional sentence. Wow. You can get an additional sentence, even after um, finishing that sentence, that debt still hangs over your head. So if you come into money, you become a millionaire, or whatever. Or later on down the line, you still have to pay that back, and it accrues interest get interest on it during that time but my thinking is not if you become a millionaire in fact, you know, if you do you know like thank god and, and well done but if you were just a normal working man now or woman mm. and you're just trying to earn your living from that money you're making you still have to pay out of it towards this debt yes that's crazy yeah, that's crazy so is that kind of related to why you focus so much on the word trap because ultimately, no matter how good things do you get, if you are making your money in this, in this lifestyle, mm. ultimately you still find yourself back into a trap where you, it's hard for you to escape. Yeah, definitely. I think there's, like, there's, a, there's so many reasons why, I, why that, that word trap to describe what we're doing is relevant and apparent. Um, so I mentioned earlier with the lifestyle thing. So you become accustomed to a lifestyle, mm -hmm. not only you, but people around you. Mm -hmm. You know, if, it's, um, if you've got a girlfriend or a missus, they become accustomed to a certain way of life. Yep. Yeah. All your people, the way people perceive yep. you, the way they look at you. Yeah. You know, that's that's Aaron. He drives a, you know, mm -hmm. whatever Range Rover. And Aaron don't wear Zara. Yeah. You know what I mean? Aaron yeah. only wears a mirror. So now there's an expectancy. There's an expectancy. So there's a trap from that element. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I can't drop this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. There's also a trap which is kind of unseen. So uh, a, a law-abiding citizen, mm -hmm. yeah, at the age of 18, they go to college, mm -hmm. um, they go to university, mm -hmm. they, they have their career that's set out for them, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're on the roads, stop if you're on the roads, then you don't have any of that. So even if you get to like 24, 25 now, and you, you just think, right, this road thing ain't for me no more. What are you going to go and do? What are you going to go and do? Mm. You've got this lifestyle that you, this, this level of finances that you've, you've built, or income, should I say, that you've become accustomed to. What am I going to go and do now? Yeah, it's true. Yeah? What it's am I going to go and do? It's true. Right now. So uh, this is what I'm doing. Mm. And then what, what happens is a lot of, a lot of men will try and set up a business. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're used to... Uh, instantaneous yeah. the road is instantaneous yeah. you can build Profit. a line you can build a line and you can you know whatever it is within a month yeah yeah two yeah. months yeah. yeah and then you you got you, mo you move into business now yeah you might and it take might loss take for like you, the first two three years take a loss yeah. for the first yeah. year yeah it might you may not never get there there's yeah. the even dream of it of it never even yeah. getting there yeah so you're trapped by that as well you try and get into business and it's not as fast mm. so okay boy that's that's not for me i know I'm not going to go and work for someone because I'm used to freedom. Yeah. No, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying. You know what I mean? So there's, there's a lot of psych psychological traps as well yeah. that make it hard for a man to leave the roads when, yeah. he's, when he's involved in it. That's why, like, I'm so proud of, like, there's a few of my friends right now um, who, you know, some of them maybe might not be completely off mm. of the roads, but for the most part, they are completely off of the roads and they're working. Mm. And for me, it doesn't matter what the job is. I'm just so proud to see it. One of my friends just got out of jail. Mm. I would say maybe four or five months now. Yeah. Yeah? <clears throat> Similar charge to yours. But they tried to pin a kingpin conspiracy charge on him as well. Right. Yeah? He phoned, he got out of jail on the Friday. I believe it was the Friday. Mm. I spoke to him on a Monday. And it was early and he was out. And I'm like, bro, where are you? 
He's like, oh, I'm going to work. I said, what? Mm. I said, you've been out of jail for like three days. He's like, yeah, bro, I had an interview. I just told the guy straight, I just come out. Mm. Guy asked me what my crime was. And then he said, do you know what? As long as it's not, um, I think it was uh, fraud or violence, mm. it's okay by me, mate. Mm. And he was working and bro, I almost started crying. Mm. I, don't think, I don't think people understand what it means to, to me as a friend of someone who's, as a friend of people who have been in this life deeply, mm. just to hear a man tell me that two or three days after he's come out of jail, he's got a job, bro, mm. and working already legally, mm. head focused, head down, not trying to get himself in any type of situation again. Mm. It's not easy. It and that story isn't common, but for me, it just made me feel so, so, so proud. But I also remember having conversations with the man then, mm. where well, one of my friends started going into legal work and he was like, bro, Yo, CSC, man. <laughs> was it CS? No, what's, what's the name? CS um, Child Support. Was it CSA? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. CSA? He's like, bro, CSA, HMRC, blood. I might as well not be working. Be working yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. saying, bro, welcome to my life, bro. I've been paying he HMRC for years, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I'm not trying to take, 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 poke fun of that. What I'm trying to say is, it's a massive transition. To, to go from a situation where you are making your money and what you make is yours to having to go into a system where you're making money and you have to give mm. deductions of that money. Yeah. I know it sounds simple to some people, but to, to man that there's no road, it's completely nonsensical. Mm. And it makes them feel like, why should I stay working this job yeah. when I've got to give this away, when I can go back and do what I'm doing and make what I make and then I give what I want to wherever it goes to. Mm. You understand? But what do we need to do to get all these hard learned lessons that you've learned, that my friends have learned, that I have had to learn, mm. how do we get that to people before they make the mistakes or before they have to go through the trauma? What do we need to do to get that information and that message to them to allow people to have to experience the kind of things that you've experienced, which I know has not been easy for you? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I think that that's part of the reason why I've created this project. Okay. Because growing up as a young man, I didn't see any of this. Mm. I, didn't un I didn't understand that these are potential outcomes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? These are the challenges that you could, you could potentially f face. Like you said, we grew up watching Scarface, watching, watching Blow, watching yeah. uh, Boys in the Hood, New yep. Jack City. And for some reason, as a young person, you only, you only see the exciting and the glamorous parts yep. of that lifestyle. And you, you overlook Tony Montana getting <laughs> sprayed in the back yep. at the end of the movie. Yep. You know? Um, and we don't we don't have that guidance, so it's really about people that have lived it, mm. that have really done done this road thing, mm. sharing their experiences, not just the good ones, so the young people can understand it and, mm -hmm. and learn from it, mm -hmm. and be like, alright, cool, right? If I'm doing this, then maybe I'll do it that way, or maybe I just won't do it at all because there are other ways. And I think that's that's a really good one as well. We need to present other other ways other opportunities, other ways of doing things. Because mm -hmm. there's so many. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the, like guys are doing presenting now. Mm -hmm. People are clearing big dough from a YouTube channel. <laughs> More than, than most, the majority of trappers will, will ever see in their career. Yeah. KSI, for example. Yeah. You know, so that, that's what we've got to be looking at. There's so many ways to get money out here. What do you think we got to do? Because you know, like, I remember growing up, there was this mentality where you know what, yeah? The risk is worth the reward. Mm. Like, I'll ride my bird. Yeah. I'll ride my bird, make sure I've got food put, make sure I've got money put down in, a, in somewhere where they can't get to it. Yeah. And that money that I've got put down will be worth me riding a two year bird. Like, that was the mentality that I had growing up. Like, I, I grew up around a lot of men that were like, bro, if I got to ride a bird, I got to ride a bird. I grew up around a lot of men that were like, yeah, I'll just go in and come back up. Mm. Like, I knew, I knew certain men that were, it's like, it was almost like it was yearly. Mm. Like, so a man, I've never seen Christmas outside because yearly that they will be, they will be in around that time. In fact, it was so deep. I had, a, I had a youth around me who I seen in the papers the other day. Got, a, he's in jail now for a mad robbery. Mm. Thank, thankfully, I got myself around, uh, away from around them people. But I remember talking to him one time, and to his defence, his life was quite hard. Mm. I say quite hard. His life was very hard. Mm. Yeah. And I remember him saying to me one day, he's like, bro, do you know what? If I be real with you, if there was gal in jail. Mm. I stay in jail. Mm. Bro, I got, I got meals a day. I had a roof over my head. 
You know what I mean? I had, the, I had my PlayStation, I had the ability to wash every day. Mm. And just him saying that shows you how hard his own life was. Mm. But my, I guess my question here is, how do you combat that mentality where yeah. some man... You think the risk is worth the reward? The risk and the punishment is worth the reward. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's all good saying that, but you're never going to know till you get there. Mm. And I, I can tell you this. I know two guys right now. I think one's just come home mm -hmm. and one is still inside. A mm -hmm. very good friend of mine. Um, he's he got 16 and a half years. Yeah. And the other was like a, a 11 or a 12. And this is in his own words. Oh, he served the 11, 12 and he's out now? Yeah, that's yeah, the second person. He's a well-known shot from West. I won't mention his name. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a big boy still. Everyone knows him. But in his own words, bro, he said, I would give up everything I have on road right now to be free. Mm. All the paper I've got on the road right now, I'll, I'll just swap it because mm. you can't put a price on freedom, bro. There's so nah. much that there's so much that gets lost yeah. during yeah. that time. Yeah. And another example. So my, my brethren um, got two two kids. Yeah, two kids. He went inside two months after they were born. Got his 18-year sentence. Oh. Is, is it worth is that worth it nah. is that the kind of is that what, what reward is worth that nah. what reward is worth that your, you know, your kids only ever know you behind the, the thing in the over a table across a table you know in a prison visiting hall i've only ever i've had to be pat down had my my nappy searched yeah or whatever it is whatever they go through in order to see my dad that's the relationship and that's the their first memories of their father for a long time do you know i think it is mm. I think man never think they're gonna get such a long sentence. I remember one of my one of my guys, he did like 13, but his sentence wasn't 13. Mm. His sentence, if I'm not mistaken, was um was three to five, bro. Mm. But IPP. IPP, yeah. And so IPP, mm. I believe it's been scrapped now, but at the time, mm. you could get up to 99 years in jail if they feel as though you haven't transitioned or rehabilitated. That's right. And so, I think there's a lot of men that find themselves in that situation. Obviously, jail is a place that can be a drawer up. Mm. You could be in there trying to keep your head down, but things could be drawing you out, especially if you're gang related. True. So it's like, to get back to you, what you were saying though, I think there's a very important point that you made in regards to, is it worth losing things? Is it worth going through the pain of losing? And I want to relate back to you personally. Tell me about how it affected you. Like you speak about how your friends might not be able to see their children. I know you're a father as well. Mm. How did it affect your relationship? How did it affect your, your children mm. and that whole element and area of your life? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And I mean, my, my sentence was relatively short. Do you know what I'm saying? I got three, I got three years, 10 months. Um, I was out, I left closed conditions after about seven months. So closed conditions oh, yeah, is like your, your regular, yeah, your regular yeah, prison. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I went into something called a, D, a DCAT, DCAT, which yeah. is where you get to come on home leave yeah. for weekends, so after seven months? four or five. Um, I got my DCAT, yeah, after about eight months. Raw. After about eight months, I got my DCAT. It's the first offence and you kept your head down. and all of these, yeah, yeah, kept my head down. So like my... My, my prison experience wasn't too bad yeah. in comparison to, to a lot of others. But even within that time, it was enough to damage the relationship with the mother of my yes. children. Yeah. And, well, she's my fiance at the time. Wow. Um, and yeah, I guess that kind of led to the, the breakup of, of that situation. So at this moment in time, we're not together or that relationship is over. So that's caused a long term effect that will change my children's lives forever. And that's, that's a short sentence, so you can only imagine what a 10-year, 12-year, 15-year sentence is going do to do to someone or something. I think it's, it's an important conversation about in terms of um, relationship breakdowns. I have an acquaintance, yeah. I say an acquaintance, like a friend, kind of, yeah. you know, who's in jail right now. Yeah. Yeah? You want to go for a walk? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. He's in jail right now. Yeah. And he's actually married, bro. Yeah? yeah. Right. But from what I'm hearing, the marriage is actually breaking down right now as we speak. Yes. So I guess my question for you as someone who's gone through that kind of breakdown. Yeah. 
what's the kind of like what kind of words can I offer him because my man's in a bad place bro I'll be real with you he's in a bad place mm. like I sent him a whole heap of books to try and keep his mind busy but he's in a bad place he's in jail yeah he got he, he was underneath observation yeah he got caught in a um a, 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 like I don't know if you heard about the um what do you call them? The yeah, the Encro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now he's he's got two children with this woman, he's married to her, and yeah. she's talking about she can't do it. She can't she can't keep this going. What 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 words can I give to my man, bro? Yeah, that's that's a good point. And um Dave, so one of the pre former interviews that we've done for this project with yeah. Dave, he said he said something, he spoke on this, because he went through a very similar situation. And when you're in jail, if you're doing over a certain amount of time. You have to be prepared to let a woman go. Doesn't matter if you have children. You have to be prepared harsh, to let it go. Because it's very difficult to ask someone to do this time with you for something that you've done. But as a man, yeah. as a man who loves, as a man who's been loved, yeah. do you agree with that though? Or do you believe that a woman who you've invested your love into and who's invested her love into you yeah. should be at least willing mm. to work with you? Especially if she accepted the lifestyle and what came of it before you unfortunately took that, that path. What do you think? Well, I think, uh, I think a lot of it boils down to how long the, se the sentence is. I'd say that if it's, if it's anywhere, and this, you know, it depends on the person. But I think if you're doing over 10 years, bro, then I, I wouldn't expect a woman to stay with me for that long. To be honest. To be honest. It's a long time. Underneath that? Sorry? Underneath that, say five. If they're doing a five, and so they do two and a half? Yeah. Yeah, then, then I would. Mm -hmm. Then I think they should. But it's, it's, it all depends on the relationship that they had before they went inside okay. as well. And yeah, it's, it's, a t it's a tough one, man. I, I, can't really, I can't really speak on behalf of that. I mean, would you if your woman this went is, inside? This is, well, this is the thing, like, you know, like, I don't like to use media, um, popular media, but you know, you got Papoose. Yeah. Papoose held it down for, I think it was five to six years. Yeah. Waiting for his wife to come out, Remy Ma. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe that maybe their situation is different, maybe because you're famous or whatever, it could be different. But I think my angle is more coming from a place of what do I say to someone? Yeah. Because me witnessing this, because the thing is, this, this brother who I'm talking about who's in jail right now, yeah. he's not a man built for jail, bro. Okay. He was literally doing what he was doing to try and allow his family to have a little bit more um, comfort. And I'm not justifying what he was doing, yeah. but I'm saying that was what, why he was doing it. Yeah. He's not a man that was out here taking risks because he's a road you. He's not a road you. Okay. So with him now being in that situation, yeah. I think my thinking is just like, what do I say to him? Mm. Or what do I tell his cousin to say to him? Mm. Because already this is not your, your environment. Yeah. And now you're being compounded with your, what is your security? What is your your safe place, your happy place, yeah. being taken away. <laughs> what right. do you say to a man? But then I guess, I guess people will look at this and probably say, say, yo, Doug, you do the crime, you pay the time, you know? You like, if, you, if you're not willing to, to take the repercussion, mm. then don't step into that, into that lifestyle in the first place. 100%, you got, you, got to take, you got to be prepared and take everything that comes with it. But he needs to find something that is gonna give him peace. Mm. For me, that was, like God, religion. I read my Bible a lot while I was inside there. I read books on Buddhism. Mm. I just done a lot of reading in general and just tried to focus on things that would bring me peace and things that would help me understand what I've done and dealing with consequences that come with it. Mm. And that's it, man. But I don't think he, can, he should expect his woman to, to, to stay with him during that time, man. But personally. They've got kids together, you say? Yep. Yep. It's a hard one, man. It's a mm. hard one. And I feel like, yeah. I feel like once again, when we speak about this, I think it's so important that, because, you know, we've got music, <laughs> we've got popular culture. Yeah. We've got, even today, before I came to meet you today, I was watching Power Book. And I okay. seen, there was a scene where my man said to the man, how much do you need? Um, to, um, he's like, 1.5 million. He's like, done. Mm. You know what I mean? They make it so glamorised, the big money that comes with this type of like lifestyle. But I think, once again, I think it's so important that we use these real life situations that I have around me, that you have in your own self and people around you, mm. that show 
the pain, bro. Yeah. Because I spoke to you today yeah. about your lifestyle. Yeah. I know there were a lot of good times. Yeah. But bro, in this conversation, mm. the good times probably took up about <laughs> maybe a minute to two minutes of a conversation. And we've been speaking for nearly an hour. True. 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 And that's something that we don't see a lot of. Like even me growing up, like I remember I got a poem that I, that I performed, yeah. And then I said something along the lines of, my dad tells me that I'm burning a candle at both ends. I said, dad, I'm rolling around in the bends is the life that I was always, you know, I was always seeing. It's like what I was trying to say in that poem is like, I hear you, dad. Mm. But bro, like I'm grinding as hard in my legal career because all I saw growing up is like, as the attainable thing or the thing to aim for is man rolling around in the bends and living that high life. Yeah. Like all we ever saw and knew about was, yo, them man they're doing their thing and they have this. Yeah. So me as a person now, when I'm trying to go into this area, I'm like, I need to go hard. Yeah. Because I need to get to that. Yeah. We didn't we didn't know about, we didn't focus on, oh, the fact that, hold on, where's my man gone? Yeah. I ain't seen him in like two, three years. That's right. Man has disappeared. Some man never come back. True. Yeah. And I like what you asked me about the good, the good times. I had a lot of good times and we could speak about the good times. But the thing about those is they, they're there for that period. You know what I'm saying? They happen and then they've happened. But you get your, the consequences from this thing are long lasting. Do you get what I'm saying? The consequences are long lasting. They, these consequences, for example, like I said, with me and my, the mother of my children breaking up, that's a consequence that lasts forever mm. for my children and potentially could be a generational thing. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah? Because they have to manoeuvre and navigate the broken family structure. Yeah, that's right. It might plant seeds in their, in their head that this is what a family looks like. Next thing, they have children and, and they're, God forbid that doesn't happen, but I'm just trying to show you that consequences like from this thing can be very, very long lasting. Mm. The good times are there, you have them, they go, but you know, like my, my brethren that's inside, 16 years and he's got two children out on the road Wowza. that's that's long lasting consequences yeah and he made a lot of money done some great things porsches the the, the big holidays but that stuff's done now do you get what i'm saying a man just even looking at a smaller level a man that comes outside so you you have um your criminal record in it yeah spent yeah yeah or unspent yeah so every time you go to try and get a job now, you gotta, put you gotta that declare down. that. Yeah. That's a long lasting consequence. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I've got I've got um uh, CMAP qualification, so I'm qualified to be a mortgage advisor, but I can't I can't trade in that in finances. Because I've got Ever. a serious for a long time. Yeah. Until my until my conviction is unspent and it, I don't need to declare it. How long does that how long does that take that process? I think it's about seven years or something. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's about seven years. You know what I'm saying? So I'm lucky that I've got a business, but if I didn't have a business and that was my only gig, then... It'd be hard. It'd be hard. Yeah. That's a long-term That's a long -term consequence. Damage that it does with... I know people that have been inside and like either their parents have, have got strokes, had strokes or had illnesses. All of these things are long-lasting. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, the yeah, same person I'm telling yeah. you about, my guy who came out of jail and got a job three days later, mm. his dad died suddenly while he was in jail, bro. Yeah. His dad was a beautiful man, bro. Mm. Wonderful man. Always had my brethren's back. Mm. Yeah, I remember from when we were young, he, but my brethren, he was drawn to the roads. Yeah. You know, I'm not judging him. He was just drawn to the roads, but his dad had his back 100% all the way through. Dropped down and died in, yeah. in, his, in his garage yeah, that's it. While, he was, while he was in jail. That's right. So that happens to a lot of men as well while you're in jail. So you lose someone. I lost, my, my auntie died when I was in, when I got to DK. Not blood on you, but my, my uncle. Yeah, of course, I know. It's the same thing, yeah, man. Yeah, Come yeah. on. My, my uncle's yeah, yeah. um, sister in law. She, she passed away. Couldn't go to the funeral. Mm. I just moved on to like a new wing, if you like, that day. Got the phone call. This is about 9 pm. I was just, just moved into like a new cell with someone. And I couldn't even really show those emotions in there. That's what I'm saying. That's another element to it as well. Mm. But something that I wanted to go back to. Yeah. I feel like your life has been very interesting and well done to you because you brought it around full circle mm. and I think you're the kind of man that's always going to land on your feet maybe because of how your mentality is and also how your spirit is I think when you have a good spirit when you have a good faith I think somehow God and things just tend to tend to this kind of land in a way that is 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 conducive to your success and progress but if you were to give your story thus far a title a line 
Yeah. What would that title or that line be to describe your story thus far? Take your time, because it's a hard one. Mm. I don't know, I'd probably title it like transition and purpose. Mm. Transition and purpose. Elaborate for me. Because I feel like I started on a road to young, so I started at, well, relative, four, at 14. Wow. Right? And I was on road for a very long time. Hold on, before you go further, yeah. what made you want to start being on the road at 14 years old? Mm. Let me just ask you that. Sorry, to, I've never asked you that. What, yeah. Why did you want to start yeah. being a, a trapper, a hustler at 14 years old? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question, you know. Um, probably mon money, finance. Finances is always, that's always a main one for getting onto the roads, yeah? And I think growing up, I thought maybe we grew up, we, we grew up in poverty. I don't think that was the case. It wasn't, we weren't that poor. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like in our culture, especially, yeah, we have, and you'll see it now, we had this conversation before the camera started rolling, the, the bars up there, mm -hmm. yeah? 16 year olds now, they gotta have a mirror, they gotta have um, Dior. a Dior, whatever, before they can even go and talk to a girl or mm -hmm. look, look mm -hmm. like anybody. Mm -hmm. So we've got this thing in our culture where we gotta have certain things. The average parent can't afford that. It's not that they're poor mm -hmm. at all. They're just an over expensive thing. It's an over expensive thing. So TPRP, the prison radio project. Yes. yes. Tell me exactly what that is and what it means to you. Cool. So the prison radio project is a project where I fundamentally speak to ex-offenders that have come out turn their lives around to try and just uncover uncover some of the hidden consequences that come with going to jail what it means to me um, obviously I've had my journey and I I want young people that are in my position especially to really understand what they're doing and the consequences that come with it um, so they can make informed decisions they still may decide to go ahead and continue with what they're doing but at least they know this is how the outcome can be. Um, I also want to give them, you know, options. You know, you can do, do it this way or transition this way. This is how you transition. Do you feel like TPRP is something that you will keep it as an online platform or do you think it's something that could be taken into educational establishments, um, youth establishments and kind of be more of a, a project that could be facilitated, so to speak, or do you feel like you have to keep it as it is in terms of being a resource to come to you. How, how do you see it manifesting and growing? I feel, I really want this, I want the growth to be organic, okay. for one. And I want the project to go wherever it is going to be most impactful. Okay. Whether that be getting into schools um, and doing talks or wherever it needs to go, that's, that's just the direction that I want to take it in. So you want it to be organic? Sense, yeah. But if I was to say to you, ideally, yeah. ideally, what growth journey do you want it to go on? Ideally, for you, where you think it will be most impactful? Um, well, I feel like media, content, media and okay. content is, is the most impactful. Okay. Um, that's, that's where the young people are tuned into, you, YouTube, Instagram, social media. I feel like that's gonna, going to be the best way to reach them. Obviously, um, going into schools is more, it's more personal. Um, they perhaps can get to ask questions and be a bit more interactive, but I think social media and YouTube is, is where they're going to be really seen. It's going to be seen. So what do you make of the, um, the response so far? How, how, um, how impressed or how, how satisfied have you been with the, the response so far? Yeah, I think, I think it's been good. Um, the, the issue that we have at the moment is I don't think that it's reaching the, the demographic okay. that it needs to. Okay. I don't think we're reaching um, enough enough young people. Obviously, okay. this isn't solely for young people, but it's predominantly aimed at, at young people that are either getting into crime, haven't got into crime yet, or, or are heavily involved in it. Um, so we're working at new strategies or new ways to, to get the message to them. So Dre, I feel like you're a man that's 
learned a lot, achieved a lot, and done a lot. We're in our 30s now, isn't it? <laughs> so what would you tell the 18 year old version of yourself? Yeah, good question. I'd say that this thing here, this life, it's a marathon. It's not a race. Take your time, don't feel pressured to have certain things by you know the age of 20 or 21. Yes, it's a long life, man. Do your career, do your career, study, set your businesses up, and look at the long term. Don't just look at today, you know, this year. Look, look long term, man. Think big, think long term. Let me ask you a difficult question, though. Yes. I feel like through your previous life, through the choices you made to do what you were doing previously, before where we are now, you learned a lot. I yeah. feel like you gained a lot of transferable skills. Yeah. Your journey is what it is because of what you did. Mm. So, if you were to do it again, would you have still made those choices? Definitely not. Don't get me wrong, I had some good times, had some fun, but it's not, it wasn't a good long-term plan. It was good for the short term. Yeah, and I just want to like, give you an example. This is a, a physical, a practical example of what I've seen, right? So going back to like 2006, I, I had a, a very close friend of mine. And at this point, we were both working in the same place. I was also on the roads and just like kind of getting more heavy on the roads. And he was in an apprenticeship, yeah? In a kind of old, like dusty car. Over the years, as time progressed, he just rose further up through the ranks, yeah? to a point now where he's in a very good job, stable career, got his wife, family home, all of those kind of things, and everything's in place, yeah? Whereas I've had a great run, I've been to prison, I've come out, obviously I've lost my property, and I've had to like rebuild again. So my option was, or the, the path that I took was, was great, but it wasn't long term. It's like building a house on, on sand, mm. on, on like a soft foundation that can just be knocked down, mm. which is what happened. So to answer your question, I would go back and I would build a strong foundation, something that could, can't be taken away from me from, by the police or poker or whatever it is. Yeah. All right. Do you get what I'm saying? Of course, yeah, 100%. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to think, you know what I mean? Because I feel like our journeys make us who we are. But it takes for a, a wise and a, and a reflective person to really see, would you know what? Nah, let's do it differently. And I think that's what you stand for with TPRP as well. So, I guess my last question for you is, TPRP, it's happening. Yeah. It's on the hat, it's on the jumper. Yeah, it's, um, it's doing great work. Some great interviews have been released. Mm. What can people do to support TPRP and take it to the next stages and make sure that so many more people can get this message before they make mistakes and also after they make the mistakes to give them the right kind of enthusiasm and motivation to make the right choices what can people do to help yeah sure um so first and foremost i need to say that tprp is not about me at all yeah i've got businesses i've got my property investment i do that stuff's for me i'm not asking for help for that this is for our, our people our young people people that are in the trap that you know need to transition and come out so what people at home can do is it's a message that needs to be shared like the whole purpose of this is the message so people can hear it and make changes to their lives and change their mindset. So we need share, you know, we need sharing. We need you to talk about it. Um, I also need like organisations as well. Eh? Okay. You know, like because what what partner I want up. this to be, yeah, to partner up. Yeah. So people that are watching this that want to make a transition, yeah, we can partner up with people that can like help them to get into jobs or can help them to start a business. Okay. Or if they've got mental health, you, you, you can help them with their mental health to, okay. to get them back to where they need to be. Okay. So anything that you feel like you can bring to the table for our young people, you know, get, get, hit me up and get involved. Man. Cool. Bro, you're doing amazing work. Your journey is, is truly inspirational. I feel like even though you've had to go through some hurt and some pain, mm. um, there's still so much that can be learnt from you and from your journey. I am proud and honoured to know you because even though our life choices have been different, 
you've always been very much of an inspiration to me. Like just the way that you are as a person and how you think about things and also how you go forth in life to make things happen. Mm. So bro, I know it's hard and I know I can see in your face the pain is still there, but I want you to be proud of yourself. Mm. And I want you to know that I want you to know that I am proud of you as well. Mm. You get me? Mm. And it's always love, my guy. Brother. You get me? Yeah, Don't hit me too hard, I know you're gymming at the moment. You get me? Don't hit me too hard. TPRP, Aaron Roach Bridgman, Dre, make sure you support. Much love.